guys, so we are back with unit one still, and we are looking at investigative science and the scientific methods that scientists use to answer any questions they have about the world around them. So we are looking at lesson three today, and we're answering the essential question, what are some types of investigations? Now, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but in your Schoology, you have a follow along activity for lesson three and lesson five. And for lesson three, you guys are going to be um, answering these little sections in the book. And um, I'll try to point them out as we go along. If I forget, just make sure that you're looking at this lesson and the sections that are given to you in that follow along activity. So. I'm just going to look at this one real quick and clarify for you guys um, about what you need to do for this section. What did, what did the scientist do prior to starting her experiment with plants? So we're not specifically answering about plants, but we are using our prior knowledge about scientific investigation and we are trying to answer what she's going to do before she even starts observing her experiment and writing down her data and her conclusions. What does she need to do before she even embarks on the experiment? Okay, because we, we need to know the answer to this because experiments need to be planned beforehand. There needs to be careful planning and it needs to be designed, all right? And so we're gonna go through that in this lesson. So we're moving on to a process for science. So testing bridge models, mapping a storm's path, searching the sky for distant planets, all of these investigations use scientific methods. So look at the questions over here. All of these questions are starting points for experiments. So you ask a question and you're going to use the scientific, a scientific method to answer those questions. Now the question might be answered and confirmed that this will happen because of this or your question might not be there. You might get different results but it starts with a question. Scientists observe the world and then ask questions that are based on their observations, but not all questions are the same. A good scientific method is one that can be answered by investigation, right? You're, you're doing an investigation, you're um, breaking it down and looking at each piece. A scientific investigation always begins with a question. Plan an investigation, so you have to plan it next. Once you ask your question, you get this testable question, now you have to plan it. Now it's giving you a highlighted vocabulary word that's important. It's the scientific methods, all right? Scientific methods are ways that scientists perform investigations. So how they go about those investigations. There are many ways that scientists investigate the world, but all scientific methods are logic, use, sorry, use logic and reason, right? So feelings don't come into it, bias shouldn't come into it. They use specific logic and reasoning in those scientific methods and how they're answering their questions. This is um, one of the sections you need to fill out for in your book for your um, activity for follow along. So we're moving on to the next page and you get these bubbles up here and they talk about um, experiments, repeated observations, and using models. So experiments. In an experiment, scientists control all the conditions, right? We're think back to our bubble mania. We had um, a controlled experiment. Um, I was able to control the different brands of soap. I controlled the water. I controlled the um, specific way I stirred the bubbles, the bubble water mixture, right? Scientists study what happens to a group of samples that are all the same except for one difference, right? So you're changing, you, 
you plan to change one thing to see if if something happens in response to that change. But it's all very planned out. It's all very um, specifically designed. So repeated observations, very important. Scientists use repeated observation to study processes in nature that they can observe but can't control, right? So you can observe something happening, but you can't necessarily control um, it as it's happening. So using models, scientists use models when they cannot experiment on the real thing, right? It's a representation of a bigger thing. Models help scientists investigate things that are large, like a planet, expensive, like a bridge, or uncontrollable, like the weather. So investigations differ. The method a scientist uses depends on the question he or she is investigating. An experiment that's our vocabulary word, it's highlighted, is an investigation in which all the conditions are controlled. An experiment is set up so specifically, right? An experiment is planned, it's precise, it's not random. You don't just go in and go, okay, well, let's just do this because I think that, you know, um, I think we should, it's, it's gonna be fun. No, it's planned, it's designed. So all the conditions are controlled, right? They're pre-planned. Uh, models are used to represent real objects or processes. Scientists make repeated observations to study processes in nature without disturbing them. Okay, so we're moving on to drawing conclusions. When scientific methods are used, scientists will have results they can use to draw conclusions. The conclusions they answer um, may answer the question they asked before they began. So the conclusions might answer the question that they started out with. Um, they may point to other questions in the end. So you could either have your question answered by the experiment, or it might lead to more questions and more research, which often happens. Um, this is also a section you guys are going to fill out as well on page 27. So let's move on to explosive observations. Ooh, okay. How does a hurricane affect animals? Are coral reefs dying? How do whales raise their young? These are some scientific, science, excuse me, science questions that can be answered with repeated observation, right? Repeated observation. You keep observing something. So on the right here, we have Old Faith, Faithful. It's a geyser, right? Um, it's in, located in Yellowstone National Park. So some science, science questions can only be answered by making observations. This is because some things are just too big. They're just too big, just too strong, just too uncontrollable for a, um, a carefully designed experiment, right? But the experiments, but, but observing, can be planned as well. Um, even though you can't specifically control the natural force, you can control the um, way you observe it. So in Yellowstone National Park, heated water and steam shoots out of holes in the ground. This is called a geyser. Old Faithful is a famous geyser that erupts about every hour. Observations of the geyser collected over many years can be used to predict when the next eruption will occur. So predict means see what um, happens in the future um, based on what you have are seeing now. So um, that is a way that scientists can um, look at something as natural and as forceful as that without controlling it. So we're moving on to the next page. The first observation of a whale is often its spout, right? The water it shoots up out of, the, uh, out of its back. So scientists have many questions about whales, the largest mammals on Earth. How long do whales live? How do they communicate? How do they care for their young? How far can they travel in a year? These questions can be answered with repeated observation, just like the geyser. For example, the tail flukes of whales are different from one whale to another. Scientists take photos of the flukes and use them to identify individual whales. Once they know which whale is which, they can recognize them each time they are seen in the ocean. Okay, so um, you're using these observations to see what's already happening, but you can also use them to predict what will happen. 
So I'm going to end this here for part one and I'll come back for part two.